Jenny the Artsy Rose and welcome to Pember Me, Darling! It's a spin-off of Blind Roses! And our two eligible bachelors are Humphrey and Raymond. So I'll be taking a break from Raymond's story, so we'll be doing this one. I hope you guys don't mind, because there, this event will end on December the December the 10th. And I want to see how- I want to get far into this as much as I can. So I hope you'll pardon my, um, my halt as putting Raymond's main story on hold. You've been working hard lately that I shall reward you with a vacation. Alfred decides to give you some time off. Raymond, I mean, Robert suggests taking a trip with my partner. Traveling sounds wonderful, but is it even possible? Plan the most wonderful holiday. Let's see what the product is! Spin off. Pepper me, darling! Prologue. Amidst the residence of darkness, there is an incredibly famous hotel. Nana's Hotel Libra Sincera. This hotel is where I work, and tonight it's as hectic as ever. Oh, that lady. Sitting in the middle of the chatting guests is a female vampire who I often see visiting this hotel. However, the source of my surprise is not that lady, but rather the people sitting next to her. It's unusual to see Raymond talking to someone like that. Also, I thought Humphrey said he was going to be busy with his research today. Are you wondering about those three, Mina? Yeah, I'm super curious. I mean, it's such a surprising combination of people. Really, it doesn't seem that unusual to me. Why is that? I can't imagine why they'd be talking about all at all. Most likely reminiscing, I reckoned. Those three go way back. What? Do they really? I've heard before that Raymond and Humphrey are friends of Harold, but this is the first time I've heard that they are friends with this lady, too. Thanks, Alfred. You've solved that mystery for me. I give my thanks to Alfred, then immediately head off to the next job waiting for me. Midway through carrying luggage into the guest room, into a guest room, I bump into Raymond in the hallway. You seemed very concerned about what we were doing earlier, but... It's fine. I heard from Alfred. You, Humphrey, and that lady are old friends, right? I do wonder what it was you were talking about, though. I wish I could say it was nothing to do with you, but... We were reminiscing about back when Harold lived in this castle. It seems she has an interest in you, as one of Titania's descendants. Titania's descendants. Huh? Me? However, do not misunderstand this. She may be a close friend, but she's also a regular patron. Patron of this hotel. We need to make sure we don't do anything careless in front of her. Of course, I'll make sure not to. A little while after that, I catch sight of Humphrey on his way back to his room. That's quite the mountain of Lon Evelina you have there. Evelina you have there. Is it all for the guest room? Is it all from the guest room? Yes, it's all headed for the linen room. We have so many guests today. It certainly seems so. Here, let me take half of those for you. Thanks for the offer, Humphrey, but this is my job, so I'm fine to do it on my own. Not depending on others is a sign of Titania's inheritance. She must have liked that part about you. She? You saw her earlier, didn't you? The lady talking to Raymond and myself in the entrance hall? Yeah, I heard from Raymond. That you're all old friends or something. Yeah, that's it exactly. Though she is also a customer of my magical potions. Just a... Sorry, I dropped my phone. <laughs> Just a word of advice, you'd do best to avoid getting on her bad side in any case. See you later. Humphrey waves at me cheerfully as he walks away. Having been summoned by Alfred, I make my way to the entrance hall. This is Mina, my lady. Thank you, Alfred. Standing right in front of me is the old friend of Raymond and Humphrey. How do you do, Mina? I'm, a f I'm sorry for calling you out here so suddenly. Oh no, don't worry about that. Whatever can I do for you? I don't really have any requests. I just wanted the chance to meet you. 
me? Well, of course. You're the girlfriend of one of my old friends, are you not? Well, the lady smiles broadly at me, despite the fact that I'm at a complete loss for words and don't know how to reply. <laughs> I can tell I'm right. It's been all over your face. What a docile and straightforward girl you are. You're so cute and sweet, yet no matter how many times I asked, he wouldn't let me meet you. So I ended up having to ask Alfred to set up a meeting for us. At any rate, it's been a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Nina. Oh no, the pleasure's all mine. The lady holds out a hand towards me, which I grab hold of and shake. By the way, Alfred, I do have another small request I'd like to make of you. Would that be okay? If it's something I can do, then do what I shall. I stay at this hotel quite often, and I've noticed that you're working Mina far too hard. I'm positively certain that she's not getting to spend as much time with her mu with her man as she should. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for your concern, but... Understood, ma'am. I'll take your proposal into consideration. Alfred? After I finish working for the day, Alfred calls over to see me. Calls, calls me over to see me. Mina, we've decided to give you a short holiday. Fortunately, Rupert's just returned from his trip, so he'll be helping out at the hotel while you're gone. It's a pleasure to see you again, Mina. Welcome back, Rupert. But are you sure this is alright? Are you sure this is all okay? I am not certain if I will be able to do things as well as you. However, I am sure that we can manage. It seems you will be able to go on a little trip with our... The like with your beloved in peace of mind. A trip with my beloved. A trip with my beloved? But that would definitely be great. That would definitely be great if I could, but... The sudden conversation has left me, in all honesty, completely bewildered. Well, I'll take it anyway! What are you ever going to get another break? Who was your travel companion? Raymond, of course. I'll take you wherever you want. I have some love tickets, so... Hopefully... We can do something. Pick for me, darling. <laughs> I'm all flustered as Albert and Rupert, as Alfred and Rupert drag me into Raymond's room. No matter how many times I come here, it's needy. It's always neat and tidy. Raymond sits there, walking in silence, with only the sound of his pen scratching at paper, filling the air. Sorry to bother you while you're working, Raymond, but could you give us a minute? Should I assume that the three of you are here because something has gone terribly wrong? <laughs> you such a stick in the mud. No, nothing quite like that. We were just concerned about how long it has been since you last took a day off. At those words, Raymond stops what he was doing, but still doesn't raise his eyes to meet ours. If that's all you came here to discuss, then I must ask that you leave immediately. No, we can't do that. This is a request from our valued customer, you see. And what exactly would that be? And what exactly would that be? That we give you and Mina a chance to go out somewhere somewhere together. Precisely. So we have decided that the two of you are going on a trip somewhere. At this point, Raymond finally looks up to face us. And just who is meant to run this hotel while I'm gone? Ah, uh, you have nothing to worry about there, Raymond. Oh... Uh, I will be taking over for you. After all, I just came back from my trip, and I have nothing else planned at present. Raymond breathes a sigh of exasperation. Even with you in charge, this hotel would cease to function after a single day without me. You can't be thinking of refusing a request from our regular client, can you? It'll be fine as long as Mina goes. Consider your day off effective immediately. She specifically requested that BOTH of you go, Raymond. She'll realize immediately that you haven't gone on holiday if you so much as go near the front desk. Raymond frowns. Seemingly perplexed. I told you, Alfred, it's not happening. Let's not bother Raymond any longer. Can you ensure me that this hotel won't fall apart in my absence? But of course. You can leave all to us. You can leave it all to us. Right, then. In that case, 
I shall be taking a day off with Mina after all. Are you sure that's okay? Of course. Though, I suppose, with this being so sudden and all, you don't have a place in mind for us to go to. That's a good point. I can't think of anywhere off the top of my head. In that case, shall I lend you my travel journal? I filled it with stories of my travels, so I'm positive you'll be able to find somewhere interesting to go to. That's a great idea! What do you think, Raymond? I say do it! I say It's fine by me, but I'll have to sort some things out here before I did, before I take this holiday. Is it alright if I let you decide where we go? Of course! I'm going to plan out the best holiday ever! Wonderful. I'm looking forward to it. Raymond's face finally breaks into a smile with those words. Then I shall bring the journal to your room later, Mina. Thank you ever so much! Now that everything is sorted here, I will take my leave. Bidding us farewell. Robert leaves the room. Raymond sees him off with a look on his face that says he's still not entirely on board with this whole idea. Can I really entrust this to you? Are you sure you can handle everything? How many times do you need do you, do you need me to say it? Fine. Let's just let's get straight into having you memorize how to perform each and every essential duty. Understood. Okay then, I'll be on my way as well. Raymond, can you come to my room later? Of course, but it'll be a little late by the time I get there. Is it okay? That's not a problem at all. I'll be waiting for you. I somehow doubt. I somehow doubt that Alfred is going to be able to remember remember all of what Raymond tells him. Though I feel somewhat worried about the situation. I leave the manager's. I leave the manager's office. Later on that evening, Raymond hurries in my room, Captain Rupert and I in a lively discussion about his previous travels. As Raymond enters my room, his face shows that he is clearly displeased with something. Hey Raymond, Rupert was just giving me all of his travel notes. Is that so? Is something wrong? You seem down. No, it's nothing, really. Say, what's that large package over there? He points at the package next to Rupert and tilts his head quickly. Ah, oh, that's from Humphrey. He asked me to deliver it to you. That means whatever it is, it isn't good news. I do not know about that. All he said was that you should open it if you somehow get into trouble during your trip. I guess we have to take it along with us then, no? Sure. What do you want with it? I take the package from Rupert. And pack it back. cute you've completed the requirements it's not like I'm happy for you or anything I hurry up and move on no <laughs> to say girl well since you appear to have a lot to prepare it seems like it is time I took my leave thank you Robert I couldn't have done this without you Oh, think nothing of it. Have a safe trip, you two. Rupert says farewell with a gentle smile on his face and leaves my room. After seeing Rupert off, Raymond raises a hand to his forehead, his expression still as gloomy as before. What a completely overbearing way of doing things. What's wrong? You seem even more worn out than usual. No, it's nothing major, don't worry. More importantly, what were you and Rupert talking about? You seem to be in a good mood. You both seem to be in a good mood. Oh, right. We were talking about our trip. He taught me so much and gave me all sorts of useful advice. I see. So that cute smile on your face was for Rupert. Raymond somehow manages to look even gloomier than before as he breathes a deep sigh. Raymond, are you... Are you jealous? Perceptuously, I hit the nail on the head as Raymond grimaces and averts his gaze. And if I am? Is it a problem? Not at all. I'm, I'm happy. Then why don't you show me that feeling of yours more? Huh? Raymond? Suddenly Raymond lifts me up and carries me over to the bed. As I lie there in the bed, he limbs over me. I'm unable to get away. 
How about we just pretend to go on a trip and spend our holiday in this bed? He brushes away the hair hanging over my face and smiles down at me. No, we can't! Mm. My heart skips beat as he stops me in my tracks by locking his lips with mine. Holidays are meant to be relaxing, aren't they? Something like this would be far better by curing my fatigue. For curing my fatigue. The hand Raymond has on my face creeps towards the nape of my neck. I suppress the shivers running through my body and slightly press against Raymond's chest. Wait a minute, wait a moment, Raymond. I really want to listen to- I really want you to listen to what I have to say. I thought- and thought about where I'd like to go with you. So I really do want us to go on that trip. Where is it you want to go? Just have to wait and see. It'd spoil the fun if I told you now. Raymond rolls off of me and sprawls up besides me. A dubious look on his face. Perhaps I'm imagining things, but he seems a little angry. He's cute when he's angry. <laughs> It's terrible for me to say that, but he is! I'm sure you're going to love it when we get there. So please don't say things like, let's spend our holiday here, okay? For me? You're right. I'll respect your desires and leave it all up to you, Mina. Thank you, Raymond. Let's get started with the preparations for our trip right away. I try to get up from the bed, but Raymond gently pushes me back down. There's no need to be so hasty. I thought we were meant to be taking this holiday easy. But... Raymond intercepts my words, drawing me into his chest. My heart begins to pound frantically in the warmth of his embrace. I've agreed to go on this trip, so you could at least allow me to enjoy a little alone time with you. Raymond... Fine. Then, let's continue where we left off. Raymond hangs over me with both of his hands on my cheeks. Preventing any escape. I thought I told you to save this for after our trip. Well, yes, but you were the one who consisted to us enjoying some alone time, Mina. Raymond gently traces his fingers across my lips as he, as he brings his face closer. You're not fair. You're not fair. What do you want from me? Should we stop here and get on with our preparations? I'm captivated by his enchanting eyes and whatever part of me you look at grows hot. Like his gaze is burning into me. My heart is already throbbing violently. It feels like it's going to burst from my chest. You are such a meanie, Raymond, but for now at least, I'll respect your desires. Oh, but of course you will. However, will we do nothing more than kissing? I see no problem there, as long as you can be satisfied with the way that, that is. Raymond suddenly smiles down at me, and his eyes move towards my lips. I can't... I think... I wrap my arms around Raymond's neck and suddenly bring his face closer to mine. Looks like this holiday is going to be fun after all. Yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Raymond silences the rest of my sentence with a kiss. Wrapped in each other's arms, we dissolve into a moment of bliss. To a period of bliss. <sighs> After our time in my room, Raymond and I head to the kitchen to make more travel preparations. Thereupon we find Jack smiling down upon Daniel, who's eating with a satisfied look on his face. Jack, I need a favor. Can I borrow you for a moment? For a minute? Mina, whatever can I do for you today? Jack rushes over towards me. Jack rushes towards me, but freezes when he notices Raymond beside me. Whoa! Raymond's with you? Hey, why are you saying that like I'm some sort of monster? <laughs> well, I mean, you're almost as scary as one. That's not nice! What was that for? Nothing at all. Jack plays dumb, shrugging his shoulders, and turns to face me. Whatever. What was that favor you needed of me, Mina? Well, I'm going on a trip with Raymond, you see. So I was hoping you could make us bo bo box lunches. Oh, wonderful. Is there any space for me on this trip? Absolutely not. You're not going to have... You're going to have to work extra hard while I'm absent. 
Raymond forces his way between Jack and me. <laughs> Got it. So what kind of box lunch do you want? Do you want? I don't... I don't really want Raymond to know how long we're going to be on this trip for, so... I chose a moment where Raymond was paying attention to whispering to Jack's ear. Actually, if possible, could you make us the food that could be kept for a long time? I need enough for two days, but this is to be kept a secret from Raymond. The faster you can make them, the better, please. Sure, but I wonder, what should I make? You need so much? You need so much. What about something pickled? Daniel's excellent hearing allows him to listen in our whispered conversation, and he chooses this moment to join the conversation. Blue carrots and black celery sound like a good idea, don't you think? Oh, those sound good! Right, right, and I'll pack in some roasted demon m <laughs> What? 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 We eat demon here? No way! No! And I'll pack in some roast demon mutton on the bone to go with it. Great lord! Oh, that sounds so delicious. Please do. No! Of course, by the way, where are you going on this trip of yours? Oh, right. It's a secret. Why do I have to eat demon? Why? Why is demon eligible? Eligible? Edible! Why is it edible? Who decided to make demons edible? Who wrote the story? I don't want to eat demon. What kind of demon is it? Is it like, um, a demon chicken? <laughs> or maybe a demon cow? A demon bull? I don't like that! <laughs> but I'm still freaking- I'm still freaking out over this. Um... This is what happens when you get- This is what happens when you watch a lot of, This is what happens when you read the Black Butler series and you get attached to a certain demon. Yes, I'm talking about Sebastian Michaelis. I, I fleetingly glance in- in Raymond's direction. He seemingly hasn't hasn't caught on to our conversation yet and is busy writing something. What? You won't tell me? How cruel of you, Mina. Then I won't make your lunch boxes after all. That would be most troubling. Hey now, don't pester her. If I don't even know where we're going, then there's no reason you should either. Raymond passes the note. He has just been he had just, just been riding over to Jack. <laughs> to make up for it. How about I let you know how much work you're going to have to do when I'm away. While I'm away. Well, what's this? This is way more than I usually do! If you want it lessened, then you better hurry up and make those meals. Fine, fine. I'll, I'll get it done as fast as lightning. So just wait a bit. Thank you, Jack. Just as he said he would, Jack starts working with incredible speed, and before long, our box of meals are ready. After this, Raymond and I go about doing the rest of our preparations in a similar manner. Carrying massive travel bags, Raymond and I say, say farewell to everyone and set off. After leaving the hotel, we immediately enter a forest. I don't think I ever took a picture of this lovely environment. I opened up a map I've gotten from Rupert along with his travel notes. Right, this is the start of our trip. That's great or not, but don't you think we're carrying a bit too much? Not at all. We've only got stuff that's absolutely necessary for a trip. Don't worry about it. Just where is it we're going, though? Emma tries to peep over my shoulder at the map. Hey, no peeking! I've got it all sorted out! Uh, yeah, of course. Seemingly surprised by how I barked at him, Raymond stops moving. Raymond, please don't worry about it. Just leave it all to me, okay? Raymond doesn't answer me and seems somewhat dissatisfied, but I ignore it. Right, we're going this way. As I say this, I grab Raymond by the hand and start walking in the direction indicated on the map. 
My heart is racing at the fact that I'm going to get to spend all this time alone with Raymond. However, I didn't know, I didn't yet know that this trip was going to be the wildest, most unimaginable adventure I'd ever experienced. <sighs> well, that's all for now. I am Jandy the Artsy Rose, and I shall see you in another video. Goodbye!